again, if you missed the very beginning, I am Yvonne Ashton and I have Dave Taggy here with me today. We're so excited to host our very first Mornings with Me a show. Um, we're going to talk all things flowers. We're going to talk about general flower, flower things. Um, we have destination event questions, flower business questions, flower design, um, and then we're going to do a really quick recap about marketing and social media. So Dave, let's get started. What's all right, a, let's go. Yeah, what's exciting in the world of flowers? Well, <clears throat> as you can all imagine, we're all recovering from a long Mother's Day week. Um, we should be getting an update shortly from our purchasing team, and um, we will post that on our blog so that y'all can see what is coming and what is going. Yes. Um, I know personally, this time of year, I get really excited when bearded iris come into season. It's my favorite flower of all. Uh, reminds me of my mother. And um, she actually grew them and uh, got me really involved in flowers as a child. So um, I know Oregon peonies are coming into season now. Um, they are some of the biggest and most beautiful peonies in the world. Love and um, as we transition towards the summer, we're gonna see all kinds of uh, summer flowers coming in. Um, I love it when the Pacific Northwest starts going crazy. Um, over in Spokane and Western Washington, they grow some of that gigantic allium and the uh, aramuris that everybody loves so much. So stay tuned for that. It's coming really soon. Um, you know, we'll we'll get that up on the blog and uh, with the rest of the stuff that's looking good coming coming soon. Awesome! That's so exciting. I know when peony season starts, everyone gets very very excited. Love it. And the aramuris yeah. is giant. It's so big. I I love that stuff. It's so cool looking. Looks like, it was unfortunate um, like with weather tail. this year that we missed some of the peonies from Oregon for Mother's Day. Um, I think last year they hit a few weeks earlier, so we were able to enjoy them. So, right. unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. But. Right, right, exactly. Um, great, thank you, Dave. And so here is our first question from Amanda, and she wants to know, what is the best way to keep stock from getting gummy? You know, all gooey and gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> stock is one of the biggest defenders for a couple different reasons. Um, uh, first of all, it fouls the water really bad. And, you know, most florists will know <laughs> stock water, ooh, stay away from it. Um, what you can do is um, make sure you're adding a floral food that's um, in, in the right doses. And you can supplement that by adding a couple of drops of water to keep the water from getting foul and stagnant. Uh, it cuts the bacteria down. Um, stock has really fleshy stems and flowers. So it's good to keep them in your cooler in a place that's well ventilated. Um, it really only takes botrytis spores about eight to 12 hours, like in the 70 degree Fahrenheit environment to um, produce. And once they start, they spread to everything. Um, that is one of the main reasons why the flowers will get gummy and um, turn that weird blue color. So just remember when you're designing, try not to get water on your flowers, try not to let it stand on top of your, your actual blooms. Um, if you're going to use a finishing spray or spritz them, do it after you're done designing um, because that way the end product is going to last longer for your uh, client. So Great. Those are great tips. All right, next next question is from Marissa, and she wants to know the best way to order florals at the right time so that way they peak on the event day um, and keep them fresh for the event. So I know that's kind of, um, you know, everything opens at, at a different rate. So I'll let you take that one, Dave. <laughs> All right, well, definitely talk to a managed professional about that. Um, whether you're doing a destination event or even just planning on bringing flowers into your shop, um, different flowers have different needs. Um, so you can stagger your order and receive it in different shipments so that um, you're getting things at the right time so that they're open in time. Um, you know, obviously lilies are gonna open in two days. You need probably four or five to get them to the right stage. Um, I think it's super important to use floral food and it still shocks me um, in the world of floral that people, especially event people, and you all know who you are, <laughs> don't use floral food because, you know, it, it's just for a night. They don't have to last for a long time. 
But the importance of floral food is it's going to get your flowers to the right stage and it's going to keep their color from fading. Um, it, it's really going to make that flower perform better. And I know from being in Arizona that we put our flowers under a lot of stress when we're doing outdoor events. Um, there's not a lot of humidity. It can be really hot during the end of the season or depending. So really treating your flowers with the right floral solution is paramount to the success of the flowers and getting them open and having them, you know, really perform well for you. And, you know, different flowers have different needs. If you're using bulb flowers, you need something with a hormone balance in it. Um, if you've ever seen blue iris curl up on the ends or lilies start to fade in color as they age, that's because they're not getting the right hormone balance. So it's super important to kind of learn the science behind which food goes for which flower. And, you know, I'm not going to break any copyright infringement laws by dropping names of any companies, but there's a lot of good companies out there that are doing a lot of research to help you um, make your flowers perform and succeed for you. So always read your manufacturer's instructions too. <laughs> that's the best that's, advice. That's so true. So I know you said you didn't want to name a company, but Tanya wants to know if you have a favorite floral food that you like to use. Uh, am I allowed to say it on here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have a preference and maybe that's something that we can do a blog post on for a follow-up is talk about all the different foods out there. So it's okay if you have a favorite. All right, well, I can tell you personally here in Phoenix right now and actually for the past several years, we use Crisol um, USA. And we actually treat all of our flowers here in a holding solution that's meant for the wholesale end of it. Um, it's low in sugar, but it still has the fungicide to keep the bacteria from growing. Um, it's basically preconditioning your flowers for you, but in a state that's going to keep them um, in somewhat stasis so that they're going to last until you give them the flower food with the sugar in it. And that sugar is what's going to um, really force those flowers to start opening and performing for you. So we're doing everything on our end that we can to make sure your flowers arrive to you, you know, in a pampered condition, so to speak. So great. And I see people saying yes, blog posts. Allie is on here. She helps write a lot of the content for our blog. So she said the people have spoken and she's adding it to her list. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it on our content calendar. Um, that's great. So I know, yeah, there's a lot of um, floral food companies out there. I'm on uh, the WUSFA marketing committee and, you know, we have people from Oasis and Flora Life and all of that. And I remember one time that we were talking about uh, flower care, handling care and procedures and all of that. And I was like, don't people know that? <laughs> and they're like, kind of, but people don't follow, follow it. You know, we, we've done all these studies and there's all these things that say, this is what you should be doing. Um, but for some reason, people still don't do it. So, you know, obviously making, making sure the flowers last as long as possible and look their best is so important and paramount to our industry and, and to everyone's business that's here watching. So um, definitely, if you don't do that, check that out. And we'll definitely work on some information for you guys too, for sure. All right. Next up is uh, destination events. So we had a couple questions um, about that and how that all works. So from Jan Marie, she says, you know, she wants us to walk through the process to order, receive managed products when um, she has events out of her local area. She's in SoCal, for example, and she has an event in NorCal. I love, I love California speak. Um, so <laughs> she wants to make sure again that everything opens, you know, perfectly on the day of the event. Um, does she order the same day like she normally would say Tuesday for Saturday event? She just kind of wants to know how that all works. Okay. Well, um, you know, I think the best thing <laughs> is to call a local branch if you're going to be near one and they can really help walk you through the process. But um, basically, order, you can order your flowers from your home Mayesh branch. We can forward it to a shipping uh, representative if it needs to be shipped to a place where there's no physical Mayesh location. So, you know, we'll ship all over the United States. Um, and basically, you can do that or you can call directly to our um, shipping department if you prefer 
um, even if we give them the order, they're going to follow up. They're going to have some good communication with you. So yeah. if you feel more comfortable with your own rep, then we're glad to do that for you. We want to make your event successful. Um, your flowers are in most cases are going to be shipped um, by a method that makes most sense to you. If you can pick it up at the airport, they're going to ship it on an airline and you can go and pick it up in the freight area. Um, most people don't have time for that and they don't want the hassle. So we can FedEx overnight to your venue. There's UPS, there's a bunch of different other ground transportation, depending on where you are, um, that we can move the product to you in a timely manner. Um, again, you need to be available to receive the product in a timely manner, especially if you need to get things open like lilies and whatnot. Um, so that's something that you need to consider. Um, you can just, I would discuss all of those particulars with the Maya shipping specialist um, once your order is placed and they can put your mind at ease to any of those other questions that may come up. And there's a lot of them that'll come up. There's so many things you don't think about when you're trying to plan a destination event until you're actually doing them a lot. So, um, yeah. I agree. And I'm, I'm married to the Miami branch manager. So, you know, we have two shipping departments, one in LA and one in Miami. Um, and, you know, they specialize in, in all of that, the shipping and making sure there's the right paperwork or even, for example, there's um, a certain celebrity designer that's down here in West Palm Beach <laughs> coming up and um, just getting into one of the hotels that is now used by the president. There's all this crazy extra paperwork. So, or just um, going down to the islands and making sure that they have the right paperwork for that and the process and how that works and the timeline. So they are definitely experts in that um, and knowing how all that works and, and helping you navigate those waters. Um, and I just wanted to point out that we will post um, a link, I'll do it right now, for our location. So that way, if you had a question about where we do have locations, because um, pretty much all of them handle destination events, um, and then our shipping departments are on there too. So, Right, and um, the great thing about the destination event side of it is that you can rent our warehouse space and we have tables <laughs> and um, cooler space for you to keep your designs. We do rent our trucks and um, we provide drivers, of course, all you know under contract. So you can talk to us. Um, most of our locations will do um, destination event rental where you um, we can customize our services to do whatever you need. You know, as far as you can work in our space, you can use our trucks, we can deliver to your uh, set up and for your strike. So make sure you're um, talking to your Mayesh branch if you're in an area um, with a physical location because we do provide those services for you. And um, maybe Allie can put that link up. I don't know if she's already done that or not. Um, it's a great events. service. Yeah, it's a great service and a lot of people love it. I mean, we take all of that extra stress of trying to, you know, juggle all the different things that it takes to do an event out of town and we make it easy for you so for sure um and that kind of also answers marissa's uh question to tips on doing florals out of town i don't i think you covered everything for that so yeah. that's great um yeah and and two i know you mentioned it but in 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 your answer here and i I don't know, but you know, I know Brian, for example, he has a, a list of freelance designers that he can reach out to. So a lot of times, you know, uh, destination florists travel just with their core team, but they need many more people to pull off the, the large events that they're doing typically. Um, and so we can help with that as well. And I think Absolutely. almost all of our branches have that type of information as well. So I think that's great. Oh, Cheryl said she did two destination weddings in Phoenix this year, and Mayish in Phoenix is very accommodating. So, go Dave. We love having <laughs> guests in our house. We really do. That's awesome. Um, so, I think that's it for destination events for now, unless you had any other comments that you wanted to make before we move on. Um, any questions, I would talk to a specialist in our um, national <laughs> shipping department. Um, there, like I said, there's so many things that come up that we probably didn't cover. 
right. and they can kind of help help you walk through that. It's it's kind of scary doing your first out of town event, but uh, we're professionals at doing it, and we have all kinds of ways of customizing our service to uh, to help you make it go easy. So great. All right, so we're moving on to Flower Biz. Uh, we have a question from Rebecca Butler. She wants to know, what is the best estimate contract software for a small florist to use? And, you know, I get this question a lot. I've gotten it at every workshop that we've done. Um, and it's come up for, for a long time now. And so this is um, a question I actually love and it's very important to me and so much so that, um, you know, Ali worked on a research project to find out who is out there doing software for, for you guys, all these florist apps. Um, and so we put together as much information that we could gather um, and there's a ton, but so stem counter is a personal favorite of mine. I love Ryan O'Neill. He's the owner. Um, he's often on these, Ryan, are you here by any chance? Sometimes he, he call he, he, he watches a lot of our live videos. Um, He's just really awesome. His software is great. We've been kind of testing it out. Um, our images are now in STEM counter, which is, is pretty cool. And we'll kind of keep on adding those as we add more images because we've been revamping our, our flower library, which is in a big need of that. Um, but it, it, with the help of Dave, actually, just a shout out to Dave, because if it wasn't for him, it's really hard to, you know, take thousands of pictures and you helped. I actually just edited like 700 of them. Uh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> big bulk. Um, so yeah, check out STEM Counter, but there's Ularis, there's Details, um, Lobby Lou, Rezo Event, HoneyBook. Um, those are all included in the blog post. And Ali, can you post that link in the comments for them? Um, so make sure you check out our article. It was done about a year ago, so it's it's already outdated. <laughs> it's crazy how fast things change, right? So, I mean, especially when you're talking about software and technology, um, the good companies are going to be consistently making updates, listening to their users, and evolving based on your guys' needs. Um, so STEM Counter is one such example of that. I know he rolled out a whole bunch of different new features for you guys. Um, so we want to make sure that we're kind of updating that soon because it's, a, I, I couldn't even believe it. When I looked back and saw that we did it a year ago, it was crazy to me. It just feels like yesterday. Um, so that has pricing and, and, de and, and features, but again, you're going to have to go to those websites and kind of check it out and see what fits for you um, and what feels good for you. And you know, even if someone has a favorite, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would be um, the best option for you. So check it out. Oh, and another one that's not necessarily, it's kind of like HoneyBook because HoneyBook doesn't, isn't focused on flowers, right? It's more about events, um, the event business. Um, but there's another one called Dubsado that is similar to HoneyBook. Um, that's pretty cool as well. So that isn't a part of our um, blog article. Yeah, Courtney says she loves Dubsado. Um, it's it's pretty cool. So yeah, just things to check out and 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 take a look at. And thanks, Ali. She just posted the comment in or the link in the comments. So we're gonna move on. Um, Marissa also sent in another question. She sent in a few, so thank you, Marissa, if you're listening. She wants to know best sources for supplies, buckets, vessels, containers, etc. There is a lot to list. Dave, do you do you have any favorites? <laughs> um, you know, you really need to research. Um, is this is for destinations? Just in general, I think I. You know, she didn't she didn't specify just in general. You know, best supplies, buckets, vessels, containers. Um, um, I can go first. Here, let me. Yeah, there's so many to mention, and it really depends on your locality. And most people ship all over the United States now, so. Um. I love her. Okay, can <laughs> I say? Cute. Yeah, I I love um, Accent Decor is one of our our sponsors for our workshop, and um, we are going to we're working on trying to carry their their products in in our supply department. But they're just amazing people. They're an amazing company. Um, and I'm in love with this little selfie vase. I actually, I got three of them for my daughter's birthday party that I'm planning here soon. We're doing a unicorn theme. So I'm going to turn her into a unicorn and I have three of them. It's going to be really cute. Um, and so 
I, yeah, I think it just depends. You know, Accent Decor is a really great um, company for containers, but there's, you know, the I know like Christy, for example, our design store, she uses a lot of that for her events and things like that. Um, Syndicate, I love Syndicate. I, I work with um, Kim. She's in the marketing department there um, on my Westville committee. And uh, they have a, a lot of great products too. So I think it's just, you know, looking at your brand and kind of seeing what what you think flows with your brand what represents you what what do you want to put out there that really talks to and speaks to your company um and i asked shelly um for a little bit of help she's our manager in carlsbad and so you know she was saying she recommends um san diego floral supply and floral supply syndicate that's who they use down there um but for specialty containers she you know obviously loves accent decor um and she also loves pack hill collection online resource and a good an, another good online resource she likes is save on craft so those are her recommendations do you guys everyone that's listening you know who do you who do you guys love why don't you share that in the comments because i think that's a good question just for all of you guys maybe to share and again maybe this is a, a future blog post talking about hard goods and buckets I don't know where to get buckets. Where do you, where do we, I know we get our buckets from Holland. <laughs> right? We have like the big Dutch buckets everywhere. I don't think that's like something that you guys want to use. Do you, do you know, Dave? <laughs> um, we purchase ours bulk and honestly, I'm not sure where we get them. I think they come through our Riverside. Um, so we'll have to yeah. check with, with them to see where they're getting them from. Cause we bring them in by the pallet and I know it's just like insane. There's these huge, you know, seven foot tall pallets full of buckets. Yeah. Um, you know, I know we're blessed here in Arizona to have Askren and Sons down in Tucson and they deliver locally and they have some really cool stuff here. Um, so, you know, like I was saying, it depends locally. It, it, it's great to check out your local area because there's a lot of little um, mom and pop stuff still going on and as well as bigger companies who will ship direct i think anyone at this point can ship directly to you so it's a matter of preference yeah for hard yeah. goods it's good but yeah so. we'll we'll i think look into that a little bit more because i think that could be fun Absolutely. and honestly this is something that i would love to focus on it's in our content calendar actually to to eventually focus on once we have time um but talking about just hard goods in general and the trends and what's new and what's coming up so i want to do a better job on that on that end of the spectrum um we focus so much on on cut flowers but that is still an important part to um what we do here all right next question is from trina and she says uh she's a florist in a small town in south alabama and she's just wondering how other florists across the nation mark up their cost of flowers and goods. And also when incorporating labor, what percentage do you use to get the labor factor? Um, this is such a great question. And if any of you guys are brave enough to uh, post on here how you mark up your, your flowers and goods and labor, I would love for you guys to share that. Um, and so I, I reached out to Shelly on this too, because um, I'm not a florist, but she, she's she been in the business for a long time. And she said that the industry average is three to three and a half times markup on fresh product, and then 15 to 20% labor. Uh, she says also that wedding corsage and any handwork is usually five times markup, and hard goods are usually keystoned and freight added. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, so, but I also wanted to mention, I know it's like, no one's saying anything. Does, yeah, can you repeat? Yes, Tanya, I can repeat. See, I'm paying attention to you guys. Um, yeah, okay. So industry average is three to three and a half times markup on fresh product and then 15 to 20% on labor. I don't know what keystone means. Do you know what that means? I didn't get a chance to ask Shelly and I was a little confused about that. Does anyone know what that means? Dave, do you? <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Can you um, hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. There we go, sorry. <laughs> um, I think when they say keystone, they just mean that's a set marked, uh, like a set markup okay. on okay. that specific 
you know, product. Um, I do want to add, though, that I think depending on the demographic demographics in your area, that the markup is going to be a little bit different, you know, from place to place. So really, that's something you want to network with your fellow florists in your area and see what they're doing. And, you know, there's a lot of um, conferences and things that go on where you have the opportunity to talk those kind of things. And some people are forthcoming and some won't be. Um, but, uh, you know, you definitely don't want to price yourself out of your own market, um, obviously. So right. networking is a key with anything. You need to communicate with the other people who are doing the same thing you are so that you can find out what the trends are and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know, put That's yourself great. in the same market so that you're still competitive with those people. Oh, Caitlin says Keystone is doubling. So if it cost a fifty dollars, just then it would be a hundred. So that's good to know. I learned something new today. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So okay, industry average. Let me repeat that one more time from Shelley. Three to three and a half time markup on fresh product, fifteen to twenty percent on labor, then any kind of kind of handwork, you know, the wedding corsage, that type of thing, five time markup. And then hard goods is usually keystoned with the freight added, according to Shelly. Okay, so I wanted to mention also, though, um, back in September, we did um, a live chat with Ryan O'Neill from STEM Counter, and he discussed his philosophy on flower markup. Um, the video is about an hour long, so it's a lot of detail to get into right now and right here. Um, but the gist of it is Ryan looks at it from... A different angle. He starts from what you want to make at the end of the year and then works backwards from there to determine your markup. Um, so it's really interesting and it's what him and his wife, they own a, um, a, a florist as well and that's what they do. So it's it's it work, it's worked well for him and, and he wants to share that. Um, so make sure you check that out. Ellie, can you post that link in the comments too for the blog? Um, so it's just the replay of how to determine your floral markup. It's very cool. Um, I also wanted to mention a couple comments in here. So Randy says, um, Flirty Fleurs is a good resource. Look at her toolbox and she has something there on pricing. We love Flirty Fleurs. Um, we're, you know, one of the sponsor we, we have an ad on there and then we always um we love their magazine make sure you guys check out their magazine it's so beautiful they do it once a year and then also Allie got to help with one of the articles in the past issue too so check that out okay and then who else oh amanda says preston bailey has a friend a fantastic pricing blog on how he figures costs and labor so two really great resources from your fellow florists thank you guys uh let's see um, Shelby, I see your question, but we'll probably get to that maybe for our next show. Um, so that way I can ask around and kind of figure that out if that's cool. All right, guys, let's move on. Okay, so like I said, we got a ton of um, floral design questions. So we're gonna we're gonna head in over to those right now. So Rebecca Butler asks. What's the best method to make a garland? Any hints to, hints to ensure it stays together really well? And then also, is it more cost effective to make yourself or order from a company that specialize in, specializes in garland? Dave, do you wanna take that? And I'm gonna also queue up my screen real quick while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you back in the 90s when I was in floral design school, it's been a while, kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we used to make everything you know, by hand. So it was all paddle wire and string, and then we would add the greens on. Um, I can tell you, it, it was a lot of time and elbow grease to make these things. Um, luckily, there was a company years back that made some machines. Um, I don't believe they're still fabricating these machines for sale, but Mayesh was lucky enough to get many of them um, for our locations. So we can make you some really awesome structurally sound garlands um, that won't fall apart and um, takes all that stress out of, you know, off of you um, as they are such a time consuming thing to, to create. Um, when you're having these scheduled, uh, make sure you talk to, make sure you schedule them way ahead in, in advance. <laughs> um, we have a lot of people that want these made and you can't just call up the same week and say, hey Dave, 
you know, I need 500 feet of garland made by this Thursday. It doesn't work that way. You have to schedule it way in advance because we have one guy that knows how to run the machine. So um, talk to us about how that works, how far in advance you need to be scheduled. And um, of course, the pricing will vary depending upon the base ingredients and then the additional foliages that you select when you're putting them in there. Um, in a lot of cases, people will, people will use just a base garland, uh, you know, like a base of lemon or seeded uke, and then they'll embellish it with their own stuff. You can hot glue things in later. So there's different ways of making it happen. But um, of course, we want you to use mayash. <laughs> right, right. So, so can you see my screen, Dave? Yeah, I can actually. Okay. So I'm, I don't know how this, if this is going to work well, right? I've never played like a little video while I'm on a live video. But this okay. is a video that you created with them. Yeah, this, this is actually Francisco. He's uh, Francisco Mora. He's here at our Phoenix location. And when you order from Phoenix, he's the man who's going to make them for you. Um, we really only have Thursday afternoon and Friday mornings to make them. So depending upon when your event is, we need to schedule this man's time to do it. And he has a lot of other obligations here. So as you can tell, it's one of those kind of logistics things where we need to know when your event is so that we can have it created in time. Yeah. And, um, but he does a fabulous job. Um, you really have to know how to operate those machines. They'll take your fingers right off. Um, <laughs> they scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't touch them. I don't want to learn how to use them. But, you know, um, I do remember uh, the paddle wire and the string uh, when I was in floral design school. And I had to make a garland out of Springer Eye, Plumosa, and Tree Fern. And as all of you know, they have little tiny thorns that once they get into your fingers and the palms of your hands, they fester for weeks and they do not come out. <laughs> and you can't really use thick rubber gloves when you're trying to paddle wire and wind all those flowers around that little piece of twine strong enough. I mean, there's just not enough. So anyway, have a Mayash professional make one for you. <laughs> There's my shameless plug. So. Well, and you know what? It is a plug, but I did want to mention, you know, while obviously we love our stuff because, you know, it's our stuff, um, Christy Halsey, our design star, um, if you ever talk to her, she does tons of work with uh, garlands and wreaths and all of that. Um, she decorates doors all year long, not just for the holidays. They do spring. They do it for parties. They do it for for fall. It's just one of her, her big selling points for her shop. Um, and they, and they do really well with that. Um, and she literally swears by her gone and she gets very, very excited. Like if you, if you meet her and, and you don't know her, you might think that we like paid her to talk the way she does about us, but we don't at all. Um, she really just gushes over these things and, and it's really a, a time and a money saver for her. I know someone was saying, you know, seven dollars per foot. You know, question mark. And um, she she said it, it really is like a huge time saver. You know, she doesn't have people sitting around trying to put together the garland, and it's not like what you said. It's not as um, usually sturdy and is full. And um, we just we just do a really great job with our garlands. It's kind of a big thing here. Um, so check it out talk to your rep about it. Um, and she isn't obviously here today to talk about it, Christy, but um, I just wanted to let you know that she did do a video um, about how she incorporates garlands and, and Reese, and um, she did a design video. So that's up on YouTube. We'll share that link. You can check that out. And then of course, I just posted the Instagram video that I showed you guys, because it's just really fun. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So check it out. Think about it. Yeah, garlands are a time suck. It's it's you guys have better things to do, right? Like it's and it's not always like very creative work, right? So um, you want to make sure that you're spending time where it's where it's best suited for you guys. So you know, some people like to make their own things, and that's great. But if you if you need that help, we're here to help with you guys. All right. Rebecca Butler wants to know, what is your favorite base to make a flower crown with? Wire, bark wire, etc. Can you guys share what you like to make your flower crowns with in our comments? I would love to hear from you guys. Um, let us know. Um, but Dave, do you do you have any? Well, 
let me preface by saying flower <laughs> crowns were not really a big thing back in the 90s. So um, I did poll a few of my um, gals in the office and they've been in the design industry here much, you know, much more recently than myself. And um, I think the consensus, the consensus here was using natural materials is always preferred. Um, <clears throat> of course, you're going to wire them in just like you would a boot near a corsage. So it's kind of like that, that kind of work. Um, Oasis has a couple different types of wires that they also like to use. One of them said she makes like a loop and a hook kind of effect so that it can be just kind of like clamped together in the back of the head. Um, you know, again, it's, it's there's a couple different ways to do it and neither one of them is right or wrong. So I guess it's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. And I know um, Shelly had um, a lot to say about that. Do you want to speak on what she had commented on? Yeah, I definitely can. So first I wanted to mention, I just posted in um, the comments, we have at least three videos. So Christy just did a video. That's our, our new video for this past month, um, just about living flower jewelry and personal flowers. Um, and she makes a flower crown and she uses, um, to tie it, the ribbon, and that way it, the sizing can be custom and you don't have to know everyone's exact head size and all of that. So she has a really great tip in there. Um, Jerome has a video. And then Jody Duncan, she did a video with a, a headband and it's so it's not necessarily a crown um but it's 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 still very beautiful so uh check those out when you get a chance um and shelly did have a lot to say so let me let me go through here and hopefully i don't stumble too much um so she says depends on the style of crown for a classic flower girl crown or larger piece that is heavy with multiple flowers um she likes to use taped 24 gauge rose wire as her guide um, she likes this weight the best and then adds another five inches to it in length um, to find the most head circumferences for children and adults runs oh she finds that the most most head circumferences for children and adults runs between 25 inches and 26 inches standard wire and standard wire is 22 inches so you got to add a little bit to that standard wire uh, she will tape the two together, add a loop at the end, and then wire and tape in a continuous assortment of blooms down the length of the wire. Once she gets down to the end of the wire, she simply hooks the end of the loop and secures it, and then um, shape the wreath to make it uniform and add ribbon if requested. For more natural crown, she likes to use tender curly willow um, and will fashion a circle or small wreath in a diameter of my client's measurements. Um, by the way, a neat trick to get the proper circumference is to have your client take a length of ribbon, wrap it around their head where they want the crown to sit, and then unfurl the ribbon and measure to length. And voila! So proper measurement you have. So once she has the wreath made, um, she'll add uh, angel vine or ivy and then any individual flowers. I find that these kind of crowns using Oasis glue or um, to spot place the flowers um, looks more natural than tying to wire, trying to wire onto branches. Sorry guys. Um, but if you need to wire using brown floral tape and a very thin gauge wire works best and she likes to use a combination of both. So I hope that helps guys. Let me look at the comments right here because I see a lot of people. So Amanda says Italian Ruscus and Oasis Cold Glue. Tracy likes bark wire. And I'm I'm not like a professional florist, but you know, I know enough to be dangerous. And um for one of my daughters, for one of my daughter's birthdays, I made her a flower crown and I used the the bark wire and just because I didn't want like tons of flowers on and it, it looks natural and pretty. Um and just I used um you glue. <laughs> Very easy. Uh, Studio Terrain says for flower crown, she likes to use Oasis wire and cold glue. Amber, let's see. She wants to know, is there any greenery flexible enough to bend into a circle that you use as a base without using wire? Italian um, Ruscus. Yeah, Italian Ruscus. Yeah. It's sturdy. You could probably just tape right onto that. Um, <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. I, I would think so. I mean, I don't think it's going to go anywhere once you get the right diameter for the head. So, yeah, let's see. Oasis glue. And yeah, everyone's talking about Oasis cold glue. Everyone loves that stuff. 
All right. All right. So I think that's good. Oh, Caitlin says Francois Weeks for inspiration for headpiece. Yes, we love Francois. We did. Um, yes, we uh, do. Oh, yes, we love her. She's amazing. And she just does her own thing, which I love. Um, and we did a, a workshop with her. I don't know. Has it been a year? I don't know. A year ago or so, maybe a little longer than that. Um, so if you go to our blog and, and put in a search for Francois, you'll see everything that we did and um, all the beautiful pictures that we have from that workshop. So check that out. Okay, next question is from Trista and she wants to know, for wedding floors, how do you handle clients that want to mix their DIY fresh or their DIY flowers, fresh or silk with your designs? We have an exclusivity preference, but it can be hard to explain slash enforce at times, especially with um, there being so many DIY brides in our area in the Midwest. She would love to hear how other professionals handle this situation. Do you have anything to add, Dave, before I go dive into Shelly's response? Um, <laughs> no, I'm going to pass on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. I have opinions, but yeah, I, I, I'm... No, I'm going to pass on that. Um, I'm really not versed enough to. Yeah. So me, I mean, either really, but that's why I asked Shelly for this. And I'm sorry that I'll have to read this to you guys again. But while I'm going through, because um, she answered by giving her opinion and talking about the subject at hand, um, I would love to hear what you guys do. How do you handle the DIY brides that, that want to, to use you guys? Um, okay. So <laughs> Shelly starts out and says, okay, real talk. <laughs> which I love. Um, this is a tough one, but as a florist, you have to set your own standards. Um, say no, turn these down. Why? Uh, you're always going to get the DIY bride who wants to save money and there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is you have to curate your work and with social media and Instagram these days being so important, um, you just don't want your drop dead gorgeous bridal bouquet and personals showing up alongside horrible mason jars the brides and the family did on some <laughs> of their stuff. So I, I get that, right? Um, also doing this kind of thing cheapens your overall look and lessens your brand. Um, plus half the time you end up working harder on these types of events for less money. I can see that happening very easily. Uh, this also includes clients who have their own containers they want to use. And I've heard horror stories about this because she says often they're the wrong containers, they're the wrong sizes, or they're not waterproof. I've, I've heard that happen many times, um, labels on them, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of, that's her, her opinion, her real talk on that. Um, her other point is um, often these brides will recommend you to their friends. Um, you did her, so guess what? Then you get into this vicious, vicious cycle of, of cheap brides. Um, your pool shrinks, other clients will pass you up um, and not take you seriously as a high-end florist. And I think that also depends, do you want to be a high-end florist? There are some people that don't want to be that, right? I mean, you got to decide what you want to do, where you want to take your brand, and, and wherever that is, that's okay. Um, you need to find your niche, and everyone is going to be different. Um, not everyone can do, you know, high-end brides, and that's okay. Um, and let's see, what else does she say? Instagram has opened you up to the world. That's so true, right? We know that. Um, just because you're in the Midwest no longer limits you to a certain clientele, a certain uh, segment. Um, have you seen amazing florists coming out of Arkansas and Oklahoma on Instagram? I have. Um, it's all about presentation. Learning to say no to these kinds of clients and getting control over the kind of work you want to produce is key to success here. Um, you don't have to take every wedding and request that comes away, comes your way. If you need the money that badly, then look at other floral avenues to generate income. Like uh, garland, door decor with garlands and wreaths, right? Um, leave uh, these DIYs to other folks. There is always someone willing to do them. And guess what? They're not making any money there. Believe me. And, you know, Shelly is the expert here. Um, and neither would you be. Uh, what else does she say? You're a professional. You have to brand. You, you have your brand to consider to grow and cultivate. Setting the bar high from the beginning is paramount, even if you have to fake it till you make it. So that is Shelly's opinion there. Do you guys agree, disagree? I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, Courtney says, know your worth and be firm yet sensitive. Don't jeopardize your design for DIY. And Marissa says, I say no. So um, thanks for sharing that, guys. 
yeah, I just, you know, I just think it just depends. You know, there might be floors out there that like specialize in those DIY brides, you know. Um, and I've, you know, I've heard other, other things, you know, on how to handle the DIY brides, like just coming up with a package so that way they buy the flowers from you and let them do their own thing, you know. Um, so I think it just, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, but I think those are all great points from, from Shelly. Yeah, cool. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move on. Sorry, I, I I feel bad like reading to you, but I I had to ask someone these questions because I was like when I didn't realize how many design questions we got. So I promise to be better prepared and and hopefully have someone on here that can speak to those things a little bit better than I can or, or Dave. Um, okay, so next up is what from Trista, what is your favorite corsage and boutonniere flowers? I love using orchids and callas for their durability, but they don't seem to be very popular right now. And roses can fade quite quickly in the heat of summer wedding season. Everything fades in the heat of the summer wedding season, unfortunately. Um, they, I know Shelly has an answer here. Do you have any, any things well, that you love? <clears throat> speaking for myself, I like kind of <laughs> off the wall, different weird stuff. So. Um, things that are going to hold up like Eryngium thistle are really cool. Um, if you can put that pop of blue in there, um, there's this filler that they're growing in Holland very prolifically now, and it's called Estrancia rosacea. It comes in a couple different colors, white, pink, and kind of a burgundy red, mm -hmm. almost purple in color. Um, and they can be a little bit goofy to work with, but um, they are one of those flowers that you can actually kind of get them to dry a little bit too. So I think really, you know, like seed pods and, and Brasilia and those kind of things, we're seeing a lot more of the, the, the avant-garde look, I think, in things. And I think that's, to me, that, that piques my interest. Um, you know, I, I'm, I don't really... <clears throat> necessarily follow all of the trends that are going on because I kind of march to my own drum when it comes to to what I like um, but that's my opinion on it you know really you can find things that are seasonal um, that may not be your traditional um, calla or orchid and still make something that's you know fascinating and, and, and beautiful um, there is a uh, person on Facebook that shows a lot of um, metals and, and twisted wires and things, um, Alan Masters, and it, his designs are different, but they stand out in such a way because no one else is doing that kind of thing. So really, you just need to find your own style and experiment with what's available seasonally. And that's yeah. the best advice. Yeah, I see people sharing. I first, I want to say bye, Caitlin. Thank you for joining us. She has to leave, but... Thanks for joining us. Um, Cassie is saying that she's used thistle a lot this year and just greenery. And I think that's a, a great point because greenery is on trend. You know, it used to be no greenery, no greens, no nothing. And now it's, you know, there's been probably weddings of just greenery, which is amazing to me. So um, that's something to look at. People are saying ranunculus and dahlias. Um, and then Shelly talks about um, her love of spray rose spray roses and spray garden roses since they're little and and, and, and still cute not bulky um and she finds that um her her roses fine hold up fine um and she says i think overall the roses general in general the most sturdy of flowers her boutonnieres and corsages she's not a fan of standard roses she finds those to be too bulky i think i already said that sorry guys um she also loves using ranunculus tuberose blooms uh, which is a great alternative to stuff and notice and um, hellebores, grasses, herbs, and herbs like lavender. Um, and then she loves succulents, which is a favorite here in California. Well, there in California, I'm in Miami. Um, so yeah, those are, those are some great options there for you guys to, to check out. I'm new to flowers. What are, bases for corsages. Tanya, if you are new, check out um, our our latest video. And I know we have some other boutonniere types of things, but Christy talks about bases and things like that. It might kind of get you um, kind of into the groove of all of that stuff um, for her, her living jewelry video that she did. Cool. Thank you. All right. Moving on to another one. 
that I am by no means an expert on. And I wasn't even sure um, when Emily asked about hoop bouquets, what she was talking about. Do you know what a hoop bouquet is, Dave? <laughs> I had to Google it. Yeah. And <laughs> when you Google hoop bouquet, <laughs> you get all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> after it was somewhat explained to me, um, it, it, it makes sense, but it's it's one of the newer trends. So I'm glad Shelly answered this because really there's a lot of new um, and unusual design techniques that people are starting to use um, involving chicken wire of all things that is making design just come to the next level. So um, yeah, I can narrate. I can narrate this for you if you want, or if you want to take over, that's fine. Um, yeah, you can narrate it. But before you get into it, I do want to say that like, the chicken wire is kind of like the old thing that's new now, right? Like it's um, it, I, finding new uses for it because it used to right. be used a lot, and then they kind of moved away from it. And I also want to mention because. Oasis is one of uh, another sponsor for our workshop um, and they have amazing products and they're always trying to be innovative and, and come up with those products that you guys need. And so they have the florist netting, which it looks like chicken wire, but the difference is, is that it has kind of like a plastic, a plastic coating on it. Um, so that way it doesn't get rusty when you put water in it. So if you're using it in a vessel, um, it's not going to turn your water all nasty and, and hurt your flowers. Um, so yeah, go ahead and you can narrate this one because I'll take a little sip of water here. <laughs> okay, so thank you again, Shelly, for yeah. um, explaining this to us. Old, well, at least me, the old guy. Um, <laughs> okay, so she says, an easy way to do this is use a piece of Oasis florist net, also known as chicken wire, and create a tube or roll around the portion of the hoop that you want to secure the flowers. If you like to use Oasis, you can secure a small piece inside the chicken wire um, or damp moss is another option. Um, keep in mind that's going to add weight to your design and you know who wants to carry around a you know, 15 pound weight. <laughs> um, anyway, um, there's not much difference in doing a design like this than doing a flower crown as far as longevity is concerned. Um, you can arrange the flowers through the chicken wire. Um, this is going to act as your armature and give you light, sturdy structure to work and feed your flowers through the stems. Um, the problem with the hoop form, uh, she says, is that generally, uh, generally, thin and the flowers can either add too much weight and swing around or lie too flat. So um, I think what she's saying is you need to be important about the balance of the flowers you're putting into it so that it doesn't become this, you know. Um, she says, using a chicken wire armature is a great way to give you light structure. I use this technique for large head pieces as well. Oh, okay, so there's um, another use for yeah. or another way to fabricate a headpiece. So thank you again so much, Shelly. We appreciate all the research you did on this for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Dave. I just realized it's 11 o'clock. I wasn't paying attention to the time. I can't, I can't believe that it's been an hour. So I, there were several questions that we haven't gotten to yet, guys. I see that there were more questions posted in our comments. Um, so keep on posting. I have the next episode up. So I hope that you guys can join us on June 6th at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific um, with your coffee and everything. And we'll do this again. I do, if you have time to spend with us, I'm just going to go over um, some quick marketing news that I think would be interesting for you guys. If you have to leave, we will be posting the replay up on our blog as soon as possible. Promise. We always do. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know that Facebook is changing its algorithm again. Usually this is like, boo, oh no, what's going to happen? This is awful. Um, but what they're trying to do is get rid of all the shocking, misleading, ad, crappy posts that are happening in the feed. They want to get rid of that. They've been analyzing all the websites and the links and all of that. So they are working on that. They're getting rid of that, you should see a decrease of those types of posts in your newsfeed, which I think is a really good thing. The good thing is, is that this is going to be a little bit of a, a reward for those of us who do not post all the garbage and don't send people to garbage websites um, and garbage pages and that have actual real content. 
So, you know, again, this doesn't, it's, it's not a negative for you and me, um, but it's exciting to know that, you know, we may see a positive bump in Facebook, hopefully, because as you know, as a business, it keeps on going, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Facebook. Um, also, for those of you guys that are still with us, and I see that we have almost 60 people still here, are there any Facebook group admins here? Can you guys let me know? I have no idea. I don't know if I'm speaking to the right audience or not, but if there is, I just wanted to let you know that there is now a way to screen new members with a questionnaire. They're going to let you, oh good, we do have someone. So they are going to let you screen potential people. You can ask up to three questions, and I think that's going to be really helpful and save you a lot of time. So all you admin, Facebook group people, that's a really good thing for you guys. Um, I also want to talk about Instagram stories. So let's see. I asked who uses Instagram stories or Snapchat for your business. I have the, those who voted, 82% do. So this is great. Okay, so if you're using those stories to sell your products, according to TechCrunch, when people are prompted to swipe up, which I got to figure out how to do. I am a social media person, but we don't use the stories very often because I'm not in a branch. It makes it a little difficult. Um, but when you swipe up, to purchase, there's a huge bounce rate of about 90%. That's a big deal. Like they swipe and then they they leave, which you want them to stay and buy. Um, so there's this new company. Well, I don't think they're new, but they're offering a new thing. It's called Micmac, and we'll post the link for there. So they're a startup that launched um, a new feature that helps retailers monetize their stories using short infomercial videos. They're called mini commercials. I like that word, mini commercials. <laughs> um, really cool. So brands like Birchbox and Beauty Blender are using Micmac. Um, I have no idea what this thing costs, no clue, but I wanted to make sure that you guys know, pay attention, explore it, check it out because once one company does not if it works well, there will be other people doing this and hopefully someone that you can, you know, afford to do. So Dr. Brandt is one of these um, that's doing the Micmac mini commercials, and they've seen a 500% increase in their direct sales conversion from their Insta stories. Super awesome. That's really amazing. Okay, so also I last night I watched uh, Beauty Blender. They had a story last night. And so you swipe up. And then it takes you to this like mini commercial video, super cute. And um, and then you can like just click a button and it adds the item that's in the mini commercial into the cart. So for you guys, I think that's really cool, <laughs> right? For florists that sell like everyday retail, super awesome. So check it out. It was seamless. It was entertaining. Um, so just something to be aware of. Uh, okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is Pinterest. This has been evolving as well. They they needed to step up their game, honestly. Uh, all these, like Facebook and, and, and especially Instagram, um, they've been making so many changes, right? And, and, and just changing the landscape of social media. Um, so you may have noticed in Pinterest that there's this more like this button. It's a little circle on the bottom right hand corner of images. And this is going to give you more images that are similar or related to the image that you found um, or a potential bride has found. So just something to be aware of and to know about. So you just tap on the circle and then the new images sh show up in line with the image that you were looking at. So you don't lose your place either in, in Pinterest, which is really cool. Um, and then also really quick, I have a, a screen share to share you, but I'm trying to hurry through this, so I'm not going to show you. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I posted a Coral Charm Peony uh, picture on Instagram. I don't, last week probably. Um, so there, you could take a picture of something in Pinterest Lens. Have you guys used Pinterest Lens yet? So you can go to the search in Pinterest and then there's a little red camera button and you click that camera button and you can take a picture of whatever's in front of you or use one of the pictures that's already in your camera roll. So I chose the Coral Charm Peony and that I took a picture of and it was a faded one too. It wasn't like the bright one. It was like towards the end of its life, but still very beautiful. Um, and it then brings up results of of what they think that images or images that are related to that picture. So it was really cool. So I took a picture, let's pretend I didn't know it was a coral charm peony, right? Took a picture of it, 
there was some stuff in there that didn't make sense, like some daisies and all of that. But I scrolled down just a little bit and the Coltrane peony was there. And then it had some other things and then had other peony pictures. So, you know, uh, this is in beta, the Pinterest lens app. And um, it's in beta, so it's not perfect, um, but it works really well. So they've obviously focused a lot on fashion and food because that's a big thing for Pinterest. Um, so you can take a picture of a pair of shoes and it will show you um, outfits that coordinate with the with the shoes. Or you could take a picture of broccoli and it's gonna show you recipes that have broccoli in it. How cool is that, Dave, right? So- it's Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm very amused by all of this stuff. So um, I don't know, I feel like with flowers, there's so many flowers and uh, different names of everything. It's hard to keep track of it. Um, so I just, I see this just being like a really cool tool, maybe for us to use once it gets better and better and better. Um, again, it's in beta, so who knows what's going to happen, but just something to kind of check out and try out and, and know about and let people know, um, your clients and things. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I think that's it. 1108. We will do better on keeping it to an hour. I'm so thankful for everyone that's joined us. This is amazing. Um, make sure you save your seat for our next show. Again, I'm going to put that link here for you guys. Go on over. Make sure you follow us. Please follow us so that way you'll stay in the loop. Um, and it's time to wrap up. Do you have any any comments that you want to close with, Dave, before I have mine? I just want to say it was awesome being here. Um, I'm looking forward to our next show. Um, this is great. You guys keep your questions coming in so that we can talk about what's relevant to you. Cause really that's what the show is about. It's about yeah. you, not about us. We want to know what you want to know about. Um, we're the professionals. So how can we help you do your jobs better? So I exactly. think I'll close with that. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Thank All you right. everyone Thank for you coming. So much. Yeah. So if you're new to this show, make sure you follow our channel. If you found value on our show, please share it, please. And finally, thank you for coming, for being a part of our show. Dave and I will be back with you next month. So send in your questions and ask us anything. And with that, I hope you have a rocking day. See you soon, guys. Bye. See you next month.